I'll not keep you long. Just pray for me just for a few minutes. I'll not keep you long. And, and uh, there's nothing like the blood. We sang a lot about it. Nothing like the blood. The blood, I still believe in the old blood trail. I believe it's the blood or nothing. You know, a lot of people don't do, uh, think. You know, a lot of people says, well, well, we'll do this, we'll do this. You can't even get to God without Jesus, so he's the blood. He's the bloodline. In the third chapter of St. John, very familiar scripture. A lot of greater preachers than me has preached on this. But I'd like for you to listen to it. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, and for, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus, said unto him uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born Again, he cannot enter into the kingdom. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into, his, uh, into the uh, second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man uh, be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot see, enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that is which, uh, which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. I'll stop right there. You can sit down. I'll not go on. I was going to read some more, but I, I'll let you rest just a few minutes. Now, we're talking about a, a, a rich man. <laughs> we're talking about a man that, that come to Jesus by night. Now, I don't know if it was dark outside or it just got night in his life. You know, I know he just come to Jesus. He was a, a ruler of the Jews. You know, he might have come by night to keep uh, the Jews from seeing him coming to Jesus. But I, I really don't know. But I know this much. He came to Jesus. And I, he had heard about this man uh, uh, down through life. And he had realized and understand that he had wisdom. I, and he had, he had knowledge of everything that needed to be done in his life that we live in. And I, uh, God gave him that knowledge and he come down to die on Calvary's cross. Uh, but this was, a, this was a ruler over the Jews that come down and he asked Jesus, he said, uh, what must I do to be saved? How can I be saved? And uh, Jesus tried to tell him and uh, he couldn't understand it. You know, that's like a lot of us down through life. Let me tell you something uh, tonight, uh, uh, friend. The Spirit of God is real. And it'll move, uh, uh, it'll move from, uh, from body uh, to body if we'll let it. It will. Yeah, I promise you it will. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of times we don't understand it, but God will move. He'll move upon us. Uh, and if He moves upon us, I can remember when my mama used to shout all over the house when she was alive. Uh, not just a young lad. Uh, and she'd get up and something would run off of her on me. Uh, uh, friend, don't tell me uh, that God still ain't real. And he still ain't got the power uh, to do it. But I want you to know one thing. Uh, emotions is the Spirit of God is two different things. Uh, emotion has never brought forth the Spirit of God. Uh, never brought forth the Spirit of God. Uh, uh, but the Spirit of God will bring forth emotions uh, if we'll let the Spirit of God come down on us. Uh, this day and time we live in, uh, folks is coming to the altar. A lot of folks is coming to the altar uh, and getting a little do-good. Uh, and brother, that's about how long it'll do them. Just a little while. Uh, and they gone again. Because I don't believe... Uh, and I'll tell my children this, and I'll tell anybody this. I, I don't believe that we got as many backslid people as we think we have. I, we got a lot of lost folks dying and going to hell. I, it needs a Savior. I, it's come up on emotions, I, and what didn't come up on the Spirit of God. Because uh, when we see a person saved, when he gets up, he'll walk a different way. I, he'll talk a different way. I, he'll dress a different way. I, I'm talking about a God that's able to do this. And that's what Nicodemus was trying to say. Uh, how can this happen? Questioning, you know, how can this be? How can I be born again? How can I enter into my mother's womb the second time? You know what he was talking about? He was looking at it natural. Yeah. 
That's what folks read the Bible half the time. Naturally, a lot of times I do it myself. I, uh, but if we're going to get anything out of it, brother, we got to be in the Spirit of God. But Nicodemus looked at it natural. He said, how can I enter to my mother's womb? Look at me, I'm a grown man. That's a crazy question to ask the Lord. You ought to know better than that anyway, Nicodemus. He is going to tell you when you ask him. You should have said, Lord, explain it to me instead of saying some dumb question like that. And the Lord told him, he said, what's born of uh, flesh is flesh and what's born of spirit is spirit. Wake up. Uh, don't you know who you talk to? A lot of times down through our lives, we question God. Yeah. Yeah. And God knows. Uh, God knows the answer, I promise you. Yeah. But Nicodemus said, now look, I, I've been, I, I uh, uh, want to be uh, this, but I just don't know how to do it. He said, all right. He said, what is born of, uh, what is born of spirit is spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh. Uh, he said, you must be born again. You must be born again. You cannot go to heaven without you born again. You can't get in there without you born again. Uh, they've tried it for years and it ain't work. Uh, you know, I'd like to go sometimes uh, up to some of these people that I know uh, it's out of fellowship with God, uh, laying in the hospital uh, or laying somewhere sick. Uh, and I'd like to go up to them and tell them, uh, you big dummy, don't you know it? God's trying to get your attention. Uh, uh, I'd just like to tell them, uh, uh, friend, can't you see what God's doing uh, and the way you live? It's why you in here. A lot of time down through life we don't understand it. But I'm going to tell you, if I'm sick, I'm going to stay with Jesus. If I'm well, I'm going to stay with Jesus. I'm just going to stay with him. I ain't going to walk away from uh, the only hope I've got, uh, the only one that'll help me. Uh, friend, that's what Nicodemus was talking about when he told him. He said, Nicodemus, you can say what you want to. You can say anything you want to, but you must be born again or you can't go in. Now, how do you know that Nicodemus got it? I'm going to tell you something. When they was over there about the body of Jesus, you found Nicodemus. Brother, when you want to see somebody it's close to God, you'll find him by Jesus. You'll find him at the house of God. You won't find him over somewhere else. It's somebody's house. I don't have company on Sunday. My family don't come on Sunday. If they have a cookout, they cook out without me. Why is that? Because I got a church family, and I I'm more responsible for them than going to a cookout. Because I'm going to tell you what, one of my children might walk in the church and may not be there, be at some cookout. But I'm going to tell you something, friend, the other day in which we live in, when we put Jesus before anything, all things work good to them that love the Lord. Amen. Ain't that right? God's good to us, ain't He? Now we're going to get right back on Nicodemus, but I want to talk about a young rich ruler. You remember? when he come to Jesus, and he said, Lord, what must I do to be saved? He said, keep the commandments, and you know all this. He said, from my youth I've kept up. <laughs> thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not have over. He said, I've kept every one of them. But I like us one thing. <laughs> he said, you like us one thing. Sell all you have and give to the poor, <laughs> and take up the cross and follow me. I want to tell you something about this young rich ruler. Now religion, listen to me. Religion and salvation is two different things. Religion will send you straight to hell. Salvation will get you in the glory. This young rich ruler had religion. He was raised in a religious home. He knew the commandments. He knew everything about the law. But he liked one thing. You cannot get to heaven without Jesus. You can't do it. You can be religious all you want to. They have about a half of, half of this country. That's all they are is religious. Don't know one way from the next. And, uh, friend, but I'm going to tell you something. Religion and salvation is two different things. And this young rich ruler said, I've kept all this. He said, but it like of one thing. And he, the Bible said he went away sorrowful because he had much. You know, I got a home down here in Gunnerville. I got a job that I thank God for. I got a family that I love. But before my eyes closed tonight, all that could be gone. Every bit of it could be gone. Don't think. I, I went to see my mama, and I loved her. And on Wednesday, I went to see her. By Wednesday night, she was in the hands of the living God. Uh, let me tell you something, friend. I, 
when you pass from this life to the next, you are in eternity. Yeah. You are there. They don't need to hunt nothing else. You say, preacher, I'm going to get saved before he comes back. If you die today, a friend, eternity starts for you today. A way a tree shall fall, there shall it lay. Now if it falls to the east, west, north, or south, if you die lost, you'll face God lost. Yeah. This young rich ruler, he didn't, he didn't like what he said, so he went away sorrowful. He was sad, wasn't he? He had much riches. If, God, if Jesus would have sold it, he would have gave it to you, he would have bought it. But it wasn't for sale. It's a free gift that God gives me and you. You can have it or you don't have to have it. That's right, brother. Ain't that right? That's right. I mean, it's a choice. You can have it or you don't have to have it. It's a free choice. You're a free agent. Uh, but what you've got to realize and understand, without it, you can't go. So this day and time which we live in, we want to know why problem always stirs up in our life. We want to know why everything happens to be in my life. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When we get serious with God, and we pour our whole heart out to God and get serious with Him, He'll show us a way to escape any problem that He gives us. He'll visit us when we're sick. He'll visit us when we're sad. He'll visit us, friend, when we lost a loved one. He'll visit us when our heart's broken. But first, we've got to visit Him. Amen. He'll not force His way in. You've got to invite him in. If you'll invite Jesus into your life, he'll not forsake you or leave you. In your very time that you need a friend, he'll be there. He's there. All we got to do is call on him. He listens to me. A lot of times I gripe and grumble, and he still listens. A friend, let me tell you something. He'll be closer than a brother or sister. Amen. But you've got to turn your whole heart over to him. You can't halfway do it because it won't work. You know, that's just like getting half saved. That ain't going to work. Right. I still believe when a man bows his head in the altar and God saved him, I believe he gets it all at one time. <laughs> I don't believe he has a seat for nothing. I believe he gets salvation all at one time. I believe he gets the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Um, brother, it keeps us going day after day. Uh, uh, free in this day and time which we live in, folks has got this so hard uh, and folks can't get in it, but it's easy. It say, confess with a mouth and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Ain't that right? People's got it so hard. You got to work. You got to do this. All the work was done on Calvary's cross. Amen. It was finished. You know, a lot of time down through life, folks don't realize it and understand, but I believe when the Lord comes back, I told a guy, my next door neighbor used to live up there, and, he, and I sort of spooked him off, but he'd come up there and he'd talk to me about some things. And I told him one time, I said, look, he come, and I'll be honest with you, he's a Jehovah Witness, he is. But I, Dale knows, I, I'll talk to him. I've I, I seen him on his way. But I, I said, I'll listen to you if you'll listen to me. So I listened to him, and he listened to me. And after he got through listening to me, I ain't seen him in four or five years. But uh, I listened to him. I didn't interrupt him, nothing. I let him talk. And I told him after he got through, I said, listen, I believe one day after a while, the Lord's going to call us home and He's going to, the redeemed is going to meet Him in the air. The dead in Christ shall rise first and the ones that remain will meet Him in the air. You know, He believes they're going to stay here and have a garden on earth and all this thing. And I said, listen, I'm gone. When the church is gone, I'm gone. And if you are here, when I'm gone, i got a dog up there in the house I'd like you to feed. Uh, friend, let me tell you something. When the Lord says time shall be no more, it'll be no more. Amen. Folks got to get it in their head. Folks uh, got to realize and understand we live by faith, not by sight. I'm looking for the Lord in the sky and when He comes, I'm going home. I fought the battle. What about you? I fought it. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. Nicodemus wanted to find out where he was going. And I believe he did. And Jesus told him. He said, I'm, I'm going. You must be born again. And after that, I'll come and get you. Some guys over there one time walking around, they seen Jesus. And he said, didn't our heart burn within? You know it? 
didn't our heart burn within just a voice of him? Burn within there, some folks seen him going off one day. He was going up in the clouds, and he said, Why are you gazing up into this heaven? This same Jesus you see go away is going to come back in like matter. Yeah. You must be born again. You got to be. You cannot make it. You cannot make it on feelings. You cannot make it on emotions. You cannot make it on mom and daddy's coattail. You cannot make it on grandpa. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing with Jesus Christ. And if you don't get saved and get Jesus in your life, you'll be left here without a hope in the world uh, without any mercy, any peace, any joy, uh, you'll go to a place that ain't even prepared for you. The Bible said hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. You know, if you go to hell, you're going to go as a what? An intruder. Ain't that right? You're going to go not even welcome. You know, if, you, if I go over to your house and you don't show me hospitality, I ain't coming back. But if you wake up in hell... You ain't got a way out. So they ain't going to show you no hospitality. There's a man one time I seen it on TV, don't know much about it, don't know anything about it, that ain't never happened to me, but it happened to him. He said he, he, uh, he was a, a Buddhist, said he died. And he was trying to bring him to, and he, is, he didn't know nothing about this Jesus man. Said he was down there and he was trying to work on him and stuff. He had a heart attack or something. And he's a Buddhist and he worshiped Buddha. Had all the stuff in his house, Buddha and everything. And he said, they worked on him and they worked on him. When he woke up, he told his wife, he said, I want to tell you something. And she said, what? She said, I met a, he said, I met a man uh, down there. I could see him. He was white, but I couldn't see his face. Said, but he was white. And I asked him, I said, uh, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus. He said, who's Jesus? And he said, I'm the one that died for you. And he said, he looked over and said, he's seen hell and seen Buddha, who he worshiped in hell in his own flame. Friend, you go to hell, you're going to have your personal flame. You will. You ain't going to be worried about the next dog. You ain't going to be worried about the next person beside you. You're going to have a personal flame. It burns and it will not decease. Right. Right. Ain't that right? Yeah, man. I mean, hell's a place that we don't want to go. So preacher, what you trying to do? Scare me? No, I'm trying to keep you out of hell. I, I, if I could scare you and get you there, I'd be all right. But we know within our heart if we've been saved by the grace of God. My wife, on, uh, uh, when she went to church, she went to church, she went over here and they called her and they got her and they got her to come down to the altar. She prayed and she, was, uh, she got up and she told them she had lost. When she told them she had lost, I mean told them she had saved, when she got home, she told me she was lost. She said, I've told them I'm saved and I can't go back because I'm embarrassed because I told them on account of why. Because this is the reason why. A God will let you know. You know what? I mean, I can, dra I can come and get you, brother, and God, don't put it on, but I can come and get you and say, I know you're lost and you need to be saved. I mean, you can go pray, but it'll do no good. You know why? Because I ain't the Holy Ghost of God drawing you. That's what folks does a lot of times. I'll carry your children back in the back and I'll read them a story and ask them, do they believe it? I'll come out here and tell you they all right. I'll tell them they say. 90, listen to this, 98% of everybody from, 20, from 25 down, if they come to the altar, they'll tell you they're saved and never saved. Think about this. Cause why? Because they don't stay there to get what they stand in need of. And another thing, we as God's people, we just don't do what we used to. We don't pray the Holy Ghost down like we used to. Mamas and daddies, and I'm one of them. And grandpas and mamas used to pray that God would send the Holy Ghost on the church. And I'll promise you, friend, when God, mama and daddy and all these folks pray, Brother Van, the Holy Ghost to fall on them. Folks that wasn't a part of the church got out of the way. I got my brother to come to church one day. Got my brother to come to church. He was lost. He was my older brother. He was lost, and we got him to come to church. He was there with my mama. I'll never forget as long as I live. He was there, and I seen him standing back there, and he, he was much of a man. And uh, he was sitting back there just shaking. 
And he told, he, I, I seen him tell my mama something, and I seen him walk outside. That broke my heart. My brother was lost. You know, that broke my heart. But I, after it was over, I went out there and I uh, asked mama what he said to her. My mama couldn't read or write, but she's the smartest woman I know. But uh, uh, she knows more than you could ever imagine in my life. I mean, she, but I asked her, I said, what did brother say? He said, I either had to go here or here. Choose you this day who you want to serve. For my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Ain't that right? Amen. And brothers made that choice. You could either walk out or come to the altar. You say, well, preacher, I'm, in, I'm having a lot of problems. I am. I'm having a lot of problems. I mean, stuff ain't going right in my life. I don't know what it is, but it just ain't working out like I want it to. You know, Nicodemus had some problems. He was lost, but he come to Jesus. The one could help it. The, 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 you know, I never read nowhere else where... This young rich ruler ever come to Jesus, have you? Again, after that, I never read. I just know the Bible said he went away sorrowful, and I don't hear about him no more. So I don't know where he's at. But if you if you got problems in your life, and you, and you need a friend, if you need help, if you need somebody, you know when it's lonely at night, and there ain't nobody around but you, I'd stay close to God because He'll stay close to you. He'll be there and He'll pray. You can pray to Him and you can talk to Him and He'll listen. You know, He knows when our heart's broken. You know it? He knows when it's broken. He knows what we stand in need of uh, tonight. He knows when we're sad. He knows when uh, uh, things ain't going just right in our life. He knows that. And He says, come unto me. Oh, you're heavy and heavy laden. I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. I'll go home with you and, and be, your, be your God and you be my people. In my closing statement, I'd like to say this. If we trust in God like we should, they ought to not nothing come against us and He won't show us the way to escape it. Tell you this, and I, I love to tell this, it, it's on my wife, and I, I, I promise my wife she'll get on me before I leave. But my wife got, got in church, and she got saved. She went to another church, and God saved her. And she got saved, and she had a husband that was lost. That was me. You know, I was, I was down there. But see, when I was young, my mama carried us to church. Right. Brother, I mean, we didn't have a choice. Right. My mama said, you get up and go to church. Get ready right now and go to church. Let's go. And if I didn't get up, I could either get up and get ready right now or get up after she whooped the fire out of me and get ready. But I was going because we didn't have a choice. That's right. Ain't that right? So when, when I got old enough, I told my mama I just wouldn't go back to church. And I'm going to make this quick. I told her, I said, when I get old enough, I ain't going back over there. I'm the most boring people I've ever seen in my life. They holler and scream and shout and walk across babies and babies sleep in the floor. And I'm a grown man. I just don't get that. We was real poor, you know. And, and I just don't get that. But mama, boy, she just thanked the Lord for everything. But I'd come in late at night. Mama's. And I could hear my mama in the back room praying for me, thanking God for her baby boy coming home. Now, I'm not the baby of the family. I'm not, but I was my mama's baby. Mm, I was my mama's baby. And, uh, and, she, and she'd pray every night, and it'd bother me. I couldn't sleep. My bed got short. couldn't sleep. God sent me a, a wife, a good wife. And me and her got married, and I moved away. Got away from mama. I didn't have to hear her pray. You know, I bought me a hot rod. I had me a boat. I had me gun. Boy, I was set up. My wife, after we had moved away, my wife got saved. You know, and she was going to church, and I could do whatever I want to. On Sunday, I'd fish and play ball and golf and uh, uh, go bowling, go fishing. I could do all that. My wife was in church, had a good woman, didn't have to worry about her. Ain't that it? I mean, Lord, who could have it any better than that? I had it all. She was going to church. She was praying for us. And I was out fishing and hunting and cussing and drinking and, 
And she was just keeping the family going. But she got saved. When she come home at, at night when she got saved, I was, I, she come home and told me, she said, I got saved. I said, well, good. I thought to myself, yes. Because she carried my mama to church. My mama couldn't drive. And I'd always, even after I quit church, carry mama to church. Or she'd walk. So my wife got to carry and I thought, yes. I don't even have to go to the church. <laughs> my wife would carry now. My wife would carry my mama now. I don't even have to go and hurt my, I just, I thought, yes, how good can it get? That's what I thought, how good can it get? So my wife went to church that Sunday and went to church that Sunday night, come down Sunday night and me and her talked and I asked her how the church was and she said good and I got in bed, she went to the bathroom, she, you know how women, they go to the bathroom before they come to bed and she got ready to come to bed, she got come to bed, I was turned over just thinking what I, what kind of fish in her something I was going to do tomorrow when I got off work or something. And I sat there and she come in, she got on the other side of the bed, and I hear her praying. Prayer. I hear her praying and she said, God, I got a husband. I said, oh, Lord, I have messed up. <laughs> I, have, I thought this wasn't going to work out like this. I, I'll be honest with you, I have messed up. Up and, and I got up out of bed. I just got up out of bed because I couldn't take it. She was calling my name out to a God that I knew. See, my mama carried me to church. It wasn't a stranger. I knowed who he was. I knowed the power he had. I seen it run up and down the avenues of men and women oh, shouting and praising God and walking across children on the floor. I knowed the power of what God could do. So I just got up, went in there and got on the couch. Laid on the couch because I didn't want to hear it. And I got in there on that couch and she was in the bedroom back there. In our bedroom, you come out of the bedroom, went to the kitchen. So I told her I laying on the couch and I heard her in the kitchen messing around. I said, uh, Debbie, I said, honey, go to bed. She said, I'm in bed. I said, Jar. She said, yeah. I went to bed, boys. <laughs> that devil was all over that place. And he wasn't after her. He was after me. And I went to bed and I told her, I said, you get that Bible and you start praying. Uh, he's in here. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if you don't think he'll get you, you just, well, you just put your guard down and he'll take you down. She prayed for me. And prayed for me. And prayed for me. And God worked and worked, and my bed got shorter and shorter and shorter. And I worked with 750 people. And I, I told this preacher friend of mine, well, he wasn't a friend, his acquaintance. I sort of might have cussed him out. Can't remember. I worked with him, and he always told me about church. And I sort of told him to shut up and leave me alone. You don't talk to me, and I don't talk to you. But that Friday morning, about 9 o'clock at work, I got sick, real sick. I'm talking about real sick. I'm talking about I felt like I was going to die. I mean die. And this old preacher always read his Bible, you know, it breaks. So it break. It break. I was going to the bathroom because I was sick. I'm talking about, uh, I didn't know what was wrong with me. And that preacher, me and him ain't spoken six months because I told him never speak to me again. But every break, he'd read his Bible. So I'd have to pass by him, go to break, and I'd do this. Hey, you know you did it. You see somebody at Walmart walk down this aisle, you'll go on this aisle. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Well, you know I'm telling the truth. You don't want to talk to them. And you know what the thing of it is? I'm going to tell you this. The thing of it is, me and you can be mad. You, I can be mad at you. And you can, every time I see you, you can make me, you can make me feel bad, my stomach upset. And you can go on and you can live your life and not worry about it. And I'm wondering who in the world is sick here, him or me? It's me, not him. He don't, he, don't, he don't know it. And I'm upset every time I see him. I don't like him. But I'll tell you, my, my wife, I was working. I, went, I was going, heading back to the, the, play, uh, the bathroom because I was going back there. I was going to throw up because I was sick. I thought it was over. I thought the Lord was going to take me out. You know, I was sick. And I was going to go back there and feel better, put water on my face, feel better, pass by that old crazy preacher. His name was David Smith. He was a nut. He wouldn't leave me alone. I passed by him and he said, Hey, Gary. I said, What you want, preacher? He said, You know what I'm reading here? I said, I don't know and I don't care. 
He said, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. He said, you know the Bible says sin will kill you? I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I sure didn't need that. <laughs> I didn't need that. I'll be honest with you. I didn't need that. Went back there and prayed. It was a break time. Bathroom was full. And I told the Lord, it's during revival. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you'll let me make, uh, let me make it back to the revival uh, tonight on a Friday night, I'll get my heart right with you. And it come to me and said, you might not make it. And, and it come to me and I said, well, if I'm not going to make it, I'll just pray right here. I knelt down and prayed and God saved me. And I ain't been the same sin. Got up, had the bathroom by myself. I don't know what happened to them folks. You know something? God will change you. God's good to us. So do you need something from God? He's got what you need. As they give us a verse of song. He's got what you need. Do you want something from God? Are you tired of being sad and lonely? Do you need a friend? He'll be your friend. He will. You say, preacher, my heart's breaking. Don't have to. God wants to, God wants to be your friend, and I want to be your friend. I'll pray with you if you'll come. I'd love to pray with you and say, God, bless them. Give them, the, give them what they stand in need of. If your heart's broken, I, God can take a heart that's broken all the pieces and put it back together again and not leave a scar. Amen. Can he? That's right. You say, well, preacher, I've been dead wrong. God can handle that too. He was done wrong too, didn't he? Yeah. You know what he did though? The love of God overcome the evil. And if we get the love of God in us, there ain't nothing can take us down as she sings.